Few people like to be out on a limb. Most of them like to feel that they're with other people who share their opinions, that they're less likely to be wrong if large numbers are on their side. This is the argumentum ad numeram. There is nothing really about numbers on side that indicates the rightness or wrongness of the contention being put forward. Numbers can be wrong about a whole load of things. People used to say, 50 million Frenchmen can't be wrong. But a short look at the history of that country will show how many times they have in fact been wrong. <coughs> the rightness or wrongness of an idea is neither helped nor hindered by the numbers on side. Many people have been wrong about fairly simple things. Observation misleads people. People have observed a flat horizon. They have observed planets moving across the skies. Their opinion on those things might add a great deal of numbers on side, but it wouldn't alter the wrongness. The advertising industry tells us, everybody's smoking whifters, why don't you? Well, it might be that you're not as stupid as everybody else. Some numbers might impress you more than others. For example, you might be more impressed that top people take the times than you would be by Britain's largest daily sale. It might be informed numbers do count for a little more than uninformed, but remember, they don't prove a thing to be right. Some people like to use numbers to settle factual arguments. I say Ballesteris did lead Europe to victory. How many agree with me? And then a quick show of hands will decide whether he did or didn't. No. If you decide to leap off a tall building, make sure you have enough votes beforehand to repeal the law of gravity. If things were decided by numbers, if ideas were to be admitted on the basis of their support, there would never be any new ones. Every new idea starts life as, as, as a minority idea put forward by one or a few until it gains wider acceptance. If it were decided by numbers, Giordano Bruno would have been wrong to say the earth revolved around the sun, and the authorities would have been right to burn him. We'll give him a fair trial, and then we'll string him up. Those in favour, say aye. It sounds kind of unanimous to me. Media commentators and columnists use the argumentum ad numeram in favour of the ideas they support and quietly sweep under the carpet the numbers who are in fact in favour of things they oppose. Thus, for example, uh, most people agree that the railway should be nationalised. And then they keep very quiet about the numbers who back immigration or have strong views on punishment. The fallacy argumentum ad numeram is best used with passion. Ideal circumstances might be when you're leading a crowd of 600 people blazing with torches in the middle of a famine in front of the house of a corn merchant. Count how many oppose what corn merchants have done. Madsen Peary, showing once more that if you know your fallacies, you can win every argument.